when I first started learning how to code, I remember being super confused about what all the different job titles were, especially when you start to research what you want to do so you can know what technologies you need to learn. And I remember specifically being super confused about what a web developer was versus a web designer. I know a lot of people still are a little confused about that too. So I did make a video about that up in the cards if you want to check that out after this. When you get to the point when you start to research the different jobs that you are you know, in the market to maybe get after you learn how to code, you have your resume together, you'll start to notice that there are so many different titles that have very similar, if not the exact same roles. Um, like software engineer, software developer, what is a web designer, web developer, front end, back end. So today I wanted to talk to you guys about what I do as a full time web developer, specifically front end web developer working for a creative agency here in my city. So if you're interested to know more about what a web developer might do, specifically front end, keep watching. So today I'm going to specifically talk about my personal experiences, what I actually do personally, because I realized that web developers can do different things and have different responsibilities depending on like what kind of environment you work in whether it is a tech startup a super fast creative agency like me or a big tech company like google things could be different depending on where you are so we're going to talk about what i actually do from 8 30 a.m to 5 p.m as a full-time web developer so the languages that i personally use on the projects that we've been working on is html and css um, you do need to know javascript there's a lot of javascript involved but honestly the projects i've been on don't require any javascript they've been static web pages or html email templates so i am really heavily using html css and i've also been able to learn about different technologies like pug which I made a reel about. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that. But I will maybe do a video in the future where we do a Pug project. But pretty much if you know HTML, you know Pug. I don't want to get into the depths of technology in this video, but those are the top languages that I use on a day-to-day -day basis or what we heavily use amongst the developers um, is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So the type of projects that I personally work on are mostly just web pages. So I'll get a design from a designer and then I'll go and code it out and then it'll be implemented into the website that's already standing for the client. I also recently have been put on HTML email templates, which I really, really enjoy. Honestly, I've, I've been enjoying those more than you know, the static home pages and, you know, different web pages for websites. But I am still very interested in learning more about JavaScript so I can get into 3JS and all that kind of stuff so that I can build like really cool websites that I always talk to you guys about with, you know, 3D modeling and animation and things like that. But for now, that's typically what I work on are web pages and HTML email templates. Now, with both of those type of projects, like I said, I've only had to use HTML and CSS. But of course, there have been different projects that the other developer has worked on where JavaScript is implemented. So JavaScript, Python, those are two other languages that are definitely heavily used by the other engineers and the other developer. So now I want to talk about what I typically do on a day to day basis as far as like what I do when I first come in to when I leave. So I get to work around 830 a.m. and the first 30 minutes is just me literally getting out my computer, my planner, anything, my iPad and setting out my desk and just coming in and not having to, you know, come in with in a rush and trying to hurry up and get everything set up. You have that first 30 minutes to come in and work on things or to set up things. I kind of check my calendar to see what's on my calendar and just make sure that everything is flowing and that I wrote everything down in my planner on my um, iPad. And um, so that I don't miss anything because things happen fast, things get scheduled in the middle of the day. So I just like to take account for what is here now so that I can make sure everything is written out and I know that I don't miss anything. At 9 a.m. every single morning, we have a stand-up meeting within our team. So I'm on what's called the digital team. And this is, you know, just engineers and designers that are on my team and of course, producers and project managers. But we always have a meeting. And what we do in these meetings is just talk about what we did the day before, what we're working on that day. And if we have any blockers, do we have anything that we need help with that we're stuck on that we need to talk through with someone else on the team? so that we make sure that we're on a good pace. Um, so yeah, um, Mondays usually we will have a all company meeting, like an all call meeting where everybody in the company will meet for like 10 minutes just so that everybody in the company can hear about what each department is kind of working on and maybe even see like where we can fit in once, you know, in the different teams to help other teams. So those usually last about 10, 15 minutes and then we hop right on to our daily calls. So those are on Mondays. But Monday through Friday, 
we just have daily stand-ups within our teams. After my meeting, it's about 9.30. It usually takes us about 30 minutes to get through everyone on the team to hear about what everyone's doing and see where we can help. I usually go downstairs and I'm trying to, this is the part of my day that I'm trying to change. I usually will go downstairs and get something to snack on, some type of breakfast bar or some type of sweet, like anything sweet. And I get me a soda. I am really bad. I am so tried. That's one thing I really want to try to quit completely is drinking pop. We call it pop in the Midwest. I know all of y'all other people call it soda. So that's why I said soda the first time, but pop is soda. So um, I usually go get something from the cafe downstairs and I will take it back up to my desk and get started on my work. So once I get settled down back at my desk, I usually look at the design from the designer and see where I need to start. If it's a new project, um, I will usually just go ahead and set up the new coding environment. So setting up all my files and directories, um, getting set up in our IDE, which for my company, you don't have to use a specific IDE. And I'm talking about an integrated development environment. So VS Code, Atom, the things that you actually write your code in, but we typically use, or everyone in my job pretty, pretty much uses something called WebStorm, which I had never heard of before. It is paid and it's pretty expensive from what I hear. So if you are learning, I wouldn't recommend going out and like looking at this. VS Code is my favorite. I would recommend using that um, because I still use VS Code for personal projects. But I do love WebStorm because it's, I feel like it's easier to work with a terminal and it's easier to collab with different engineers on your team for some reason. Um, I'm still learning it, but it definitely has been a little bit more, uh, I guess, fluid working in the same IDE as everyone else and being able to share files, pull up files. Plus a lot of the you know developers and engineers who have been doing this for forever, they are really good with WebStorm. So usually if you have an issue or someone needs to look at your code, it's easier to just be on the same page as far as like what you use to code in so that they know, like they know how to navigate that IDE and it can tell you where things are. They can give you shortcuts. They can give you tips and tricks on how to use it. Whereas with VS Code, I was like the only person using it. So sometimes the people who have been coding for 20 plus years would come and they're like, I don't even know how to get to what I need to in this IDE. So it's just always better to kind of see what everyone else is using within your team and kind of be on the same page as far as the different tools that you use. But I think for the most part, you know, they don't really care. Like my job really actually doesn't care what you use as long as you know how to use it and you can get the job done. Now, my main responsibility as a front end web developer at my job is to create the web pages. And most recently, like I mentioned, the HTML email templates. So, you know, using my HTML, CSS and actually developing and coding. However, the cool thing about working where I work is that there has been a lot of opportunity to kind of like hone in on other skills and interests that you might have because there is somebody doing, you know, there's videographers, there's photographers, there's copywriters, there, there's graphic designers, there's animators, the list goes on. And when you have something that you're interested in, you can talk to people who are already there doing that as their actual title and actual responsibility. And um, for example, I talked to the copywriter around the time when I first started working here. And I mentioned how writing was my passion. That's my first love. Like I love to write. I used to blog. I love writing in my journal. That's just always been a way that I've expressed myself. I used to write poetry and stuff. So like writing has just always been a part of me. And I expressed that to the copywriter at my job and he remembered that. So a project came up where I was really light on development projects. So I was able to be pulled in to kind of shadow and help him on a copywriting project. And it was super, super fun. I loved working on that project. So I did really good on that project. Um, he gave me really good feedback and it was so amazing because it was the first time I had ever done that, you know, in this type of setting, writing for other people, not just writing for a blog or in my journal or poetry or whatever. So another project came up where unfortunately the copywriter had to be out for like a week, a week and a half. And, you know, the work doesn't stop just because we can't be at work. So I was able to be pulled in on that project and see the project from start to finish and really help. I got to interview different clients. It was such an amazing experience and I'm so grateful. So things like that are cool about where I work too, is that sometimes I might not just only be working on web development. I can actually get pulled into writing now because I've expressed that. So make sure if you are in an environment where you work for a company that does a lot of other things if you have interest try to find ways to voice that because you'd be surprised on where you can help and what you can do and how versatile they can look at you as um, to pull you in on different things outside of what you were actually hired for so i'm usually working from 9 a.m to 12 p.m and then 12 p.m is when i go to lunch 
And I work really close to where I live. And so sometimes I will come home and eat lunch with my fiance. But a lot of, you know, here recently I've been staying at work and just eating lunch at my desk and taking that time to do, you know, eat, of course, but then also doing my devotionals and journaling during my lunch breaks, because to me, it's become like this kind of like midday reset routine that I've created unintentionally. And like, especially if I'm having a really stressful morning, it really helps to just sit in quietness because my, my floor is really, really quiet. It's super quiet. I mean, people talk, but like, it's mostly like really, really quiet. So um, it, it's really good for me to take that midday time to just reset and reprogram my brain for the rest of the day and pet myself through a journal prompt or listen to a really good podcast from someone like Heinz, you know, something really inspirational and uplifting or, and then just do my devotional, spend that time with God and pray for peace and calmness throughout the day as I'm working through these hard tasks. So that's what I do at 12. And then after lunch, I get right back into whatever task I was doing, coding most times. And when it comes to actually developing what I'm actually doing, most times I'm researching how to solve a problem. Most times, most of the day, I'm not actually sitting there just typing away, coding, coding, coding. I'm researching why something didn't work or how to get something to work and how to make these pieces fit. So coding and programming, you will hear it. I've said it is a big puzzle piece. It's like a big problem solving task. So that's mostly what I do. I did mention this before, but you know, when it comes to meetings, some days are heavy on meetings, but other days are just really just only that one stand up meeting. But for instance, like I mentioned, I was working on some copywriting projects. So that required me to meet with that team a lot more. So there were some days where I was having like three meetings a day, which is not normal. Um, at the very most, I have two meetings a day and that's only on Mondays, like I said, with the all call and the daily standups. But for the most part, I only have one meeting a day. Um, of course, if the people have questions or if I have a question, we would just get on like a Google meet call. And just even though we like sit really close to each other so that we don't have to get up and like be at each other's desks or anything, we'll literally just Google meet right in the same office and talk through our problems, share our screens. And it just works better that way too sometimes because you can share your screen and kind of work through different prog uh, problems together. So outside of that, I don't really have meetings. I wanna briefly talk about some technologies that I've heard about since working in this creative agency. And these are not necessarily technologies that I actually use, but these are just technologies that I feel like I wanna throw out to my channel in case you're interested in learning. Um, so I've heard things about TypeScript, which is basically JavaScript. Um, of course, JavaScript, um, they work on 3JS. Some of the uh, guys there work on 3JS uh, for certain projects or they're learning about it. Um, there are people working on Blender, um, Pug, like I mentioned, which is basically HTML in a cleaner, faster, you know, more efficient way of writing it. And, you know, being able to create these different uh, ways to just make things a lot easier. So you're not writing out lines and lines and lines and lines of code. You can make these code, code blocks that are reusable. Like I said, Probably didn't make sense. I'm not the best at explaining things, but I will make a whole dedicated video to that because I think that that's a really, really good, you know, thing to learn as front end developers is Pug. I've heard about GreenSock, which is a JavaScript animation library, I believe. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different things that you will learn that you, especially learning on your own how to code that you may not have heard of at all. And a lot of people may not be talking about. And it's super cool because this is what I always tell you guys, you will never stop learning when it comes to this. So Feeling like you're ready and knowing when you should start applying may not ever really actually be a thing. You just kind of have to build your projects and just go, just go into it because there's so many different technologies out here. And I feel like it's almost impossible to like learn every single thing about tech and coding. But yeah, it's been really, really interesting and cool to learn about different technologies to make your job easier, make your code more efficient and cleaner. Um, and just learning about different things that are out there that I didn't know learning how to do this stuff on my own. So really quickly, I want to talk about just some of the things that you can do as a front end developer with HTML, CSS and JavaScript skills. Like I mentioned before, what I do building websites and web pages for clients or people or whoever um, building web apps. So not just the apps that you see on your phone, but apps that are accessed through the browser via your laptop or desktop getting acclimated with integrating your animation skills through 3JS and things like GreenSock, um, building HTML email templates, getting familiar with CMSs like WordPress and Shopify, which Shopify development has really been, you know, increasing. A lot of this stuff is, but Shopify is really interesting and, you know, everybody's selling something now. So that wouldn't be a bad idea to learn about 
development within that space, especially if you want to look into freelancing. But you definitely want to learn about your SEO and marketing and, you know, sharpen those skills, too, which is kind of like one of the things that have like shied me away from it because I've never been good at learning about that stuff. But, I've, you know, I've been thinking about it. So, yeah, these are just some things that you can do. There are tons of other things that you can do with HTML, CSS and JavaScript alone. So I highly recommend just kind of like looking and researching different roles and different things that you can do. Now, if you listen to everything that I just said that I do as a web developer working in the tech industry as a nine to five full time job and you are interested in becoming a front end developer yourself, these are some things that I suggest searching. Even if you're not ready to look for a job yet, you are literally just getting started on your journey or you may have started and you're a little confused or, you know, may not think that you are on the right path to learn the right technologies still look up these job titles and read through this description and see what technologies are coming up the most so that you can that's like a huge hint if you are learning the right technologies right now for the specific jobs that you will be seeking in the future now i'm going to cheat a little bit you guys i'm going to look at my list here on my uh <laughs> my monitor here so that i don't forget any of the keywords that i want to tell you guys to look for so here are some of the job titles that you might see that are related to being a front-end developer web developer, software developer, front-end web developer, or front-end web dev, junior web dev or, front, or junior web developer, WordPress developer, Shopify developer, UX, UI work, and there's a ton more. Just read through those, see what kind of technologies they're using, and you'd be surprised how like, you know, how all these different companies name their roles, different things, but they're the same job. Hopefully this video was helpful and hopefully you gained value from it. I really hope that it gave you a little bit more insight as to what someone might do as a web developer doing this full time. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but I do get off around five. So I usually work 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And I, like I said, hopefully this gave you more insight and you took something away from it. If you did, let me know in the comments. Did this help you out when it comes to looking for different job titles and having a clearer view on what a front end developer might do? compared to a backend. I can do a backend video, even though I'm not a backend developer, I kind of know what they do because I work with them. I can do a whole video kind of so you can compare and contrast which one might be right for you. But yeah, this is what I do. I'm a friend and web developer. And I really hope that you guys stay strong on your journey. I hope that you guys have the best energy on your journey and that you stay focused, stay consistent and don't give up because most times when we feel like giving up our blessings are right around the corner and things are about to turn around so don't give up too soon don't be your own reason for giving up and just keep pushing through i'm here for you our community is here for you again the best way to reach out to me is going to be through instagram in my comments or in my dms because i'm really bad at looking at my emails i'm not gonna lie some of you guys email me and i see them like days later so i apologize but the best way to reach out to me is going to be on instagram and it's just at the minimal just just like here on this channel i think that's it i really appreciate you for being here and i love you guys so much thank you so much for everything and i'll see you in my next one